we are starting with negative one third plus eight over nine. Whenever we have, if I add or subtract. So basically there's not as many rules as people think to fractions. I mean, we just went through all the multiplication rules. Basically simplify, then multiply. Addition or subtraction, we need a least common denominator. And then we add or subtract. That's really it. it there's this one group called the multiplication and division, which is almost the same. And there's other group called addition and subtraction, and they're almost the same. And that's it. There's not a million rules for fractions. If I want to find my least common denominator, we could go through the steps I showed you before. I'll do it. Three really is just three times one. So I'm done, right? And nine is three times three. If I just write three here, what is my least common denominator? It can't be smaller nine. than the biggest number. Excuse me? Would it be nine, like three times three? It would be nine. nine, exactly, because there's two threes here. So I can just say whenever there's something in common, don't worry about it. They already have common factors. The only thing here is we have a three left here. So if we multiply by three, now they're both three times three, which is nine. So this is not a, a big problem, I hope. My least common denominator equals nine. I have this minus one third. I have to multiply it so that the denominator becomes nine. So I have to multiply it by three, which is why this little system is nice too, because you know what you need to multiply by. But if I multiply by nothing over three, I'm, I'm changing the fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm always gonna match the numerator to the denominator. Why? Because what's three divided by three? One. Right, what's 10 divided by 10? One. What's a million divided by a million? One. And one times any number is what the number was to begin with. If I multiply one times five, one times 10, one times negative one third, it's still negative one third. It's just gonna look a little different. This is gonna look like negative three ninths. Yes. But it's still gonna equal one third. And I'm gonna multiply this by three over three plus eight ninths. That equals negative three ninths plus eight ninths. Once I have a common denominator, I can make it the same for both. And I can say this is negative three plus eight. So we have five over nine. So we have six and five for our denominators. The first thing we need to do is we need to find our least common denominator because I'm adding or subtracting. I don't really have to do this but I'm gonna show you that there's nothing really here because I already knew that there was no factors in common because six is two times three and five is five. When that happens, just multiply them times each other. My least common denominator here would be 30. When you have no factors in common, you can just multiply the denominators together. For this problem, we did not have two my least common denominator here is 30, which means that if I have one sixth minus four fifths, what I'm gonna do is, since my common denominator is 30, I know I have to multiply the denominator here by five and the denominator here by six, right? And then since I do that, I have to make them the same because I can only multiply by one. If I multiply by anything by, but one, I change the number and I can't change numbers. This would be five over five, six over six. 
next step I multiply, I get 5 over 30 minus 24 over 30, which equals 5 minus 24 over 30, which equals negative 19 over 30. And that's it. There's nothing to simplify. Negative 19. You could, you would have to look to see if you could simplify at this point, because we're not multiplying or dividing, we're adding and subtracting. We could come up with a number that we would have to simplify, but 19 is prime, which means I can't simplify it. My answer here is negative 19 divided by 30. I have three eighths minus, minus five twelfths. Now, the way I teach this rule is if the signs are next to each other, we multiply them. Notice they're really next to each other. We only have those parentheses so we can see that there's two of them. We could take them off and it wouldn't change anything about the problem. This would be the same as with parentheses, but there's nothing between those signs. We just multiply those signs together. And what do we get? Positive. Perfect, 512. What we're really doing there is distributing that negative sign, but I don't wanna talk about things that we really haven't learned yet. But if you know what that means, that's all we're doing. If you don't, don't worry, we will get to it. Next thing we're gonna do is what? We have to keep our rules separate. Multiplication and division are different than addition and subtraction. So there's like two different sets of rules. Positive. Multiplication and division go together. They are the same. I could say six divided by two, is the same as six times one half. Multiplication and division are basically the same. That's why they have the same rules. On the left, I divided, on the right, I multiplied. Adding and subtracting are the same. I can say two minus three is the same as two plus negative three. They have the same rules because they're basically the same operation. Now you only have to divide fractions into two categories, multiplication, division, or addition, subtraction. So actually, I'm going to, I think I'm going to erase that just because I know it's going to get in my way. What's the first thing we need to do? We have to find our least common denominator. Because we have to add them, we need a common denominator. I have eight and I have 12. I'm going to say 8 is 2 times 4, and that's prime. And I'm going to say 4 is 2 times 2, and these are both prime. So this is 2 times 2 times 2. 12, 2 times 6, prime. 2 times 3, prime. So this is 2 times 2 times 3. Now, what you can do is you can say, well, this is in common. To this and this is in common to this and then we know what it is that we need to multiply the opposite numbers by because we've already found the ones that are common okay so what would go on under the eight times three and then other would be two i'll even show you why this is an easy way so if i start with three eighths well i know I have to multiply this by three. So three over three, because that's what I needed to make my common denominator. And then I have plus five over 12. And I must have to multiply this by two to get my common denominator. This equals nine over 24 plus 10 over 24 which equals 19 over 24. I just add the numerators together once the denominators are the same. Is this feeling easy or was it always easy for you?
Um, I mean, it was kind of easy for me, but I, I actually see like what you're, what you mean by doing the tree, how it makes it easier with like bigger numbers. Yes. Practicing on small numbers is a really good way to not get really confused when things get bigger. This method will always work and very rarely taught. What's the first thing I have to do? LCD, LCM. I mean, it's in the denominator, so I call it the LCD, but LCM is the same either way. That just means least common multiple. We take eight, six, and 12. This is two times four, and this is two times two. This is two times three, and that's it. This is two times three. And this is two times six. This is prime, and this is two times three. So this is two times two times three. And then again, the easiest way to start is by just somehow making it known to yourself that this and this and this are already in common. And then we try to make them all the same. I usually start just with the first number because it's the first number. And I do these together. And then I see I have two twos here. I see I have one three. I have no threes under the eight, so I need to put a three there. And then I have two twos. So I need two more twos because I've already canceled the one they have in common. Now the first two numbers have a common number. Let's see if there's anything we have to do to the 12. I could actually write this. This is two times two times two times three, two times two times two times three, two times two times two times three. And now they're all the same. I have negative one eighth and the eight, I have to multiply by three to multiply it by three over three. And that's 24. I hope the rest of them become 24. We have plus five sixth times. Well, six times four is 24. I multiply by two times two, which is four over four. And notice 24 again. And then I have minus five twelfths, and I'm multiplying by two over two. And look, 24 again. We must have done it right. This is going to equal minus 3 over 24 plus 20 over 24 minus 10 over 24, which is going to equal, I think that would make it a little more clear. And then I know my denominator is 24. I'm going to add them in the order that I like. What I'm asking you to do, I do as well. And how do I make it easier? Well. I have 20 minus 10 right there, which I already know is easy. That's 10. And then I could subtract the three. So I can do it in this order. As long as the sign goes along with the number, it doesn't matter what order I do it in. 20 minus 10 is 10. 10 minus three is seven. This equals seven over 24. And seven does not divide 24 which means I'm done. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for listening.